Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Two Pros podcast. Joe, how are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you, pal. It's been a, a busy week since last week, but now I think we've got some good things to talk about this week. Good stuff. Before we kind of kick off, I just want to kind of congratulate you, Joe's purchased a new piece of technology for his, his putting and short game instruction, but he's also been working to the wee small hours on passing certifications, going through process. Joe, do you want to talk a little bit about what you've been up to? Uh, yeah, it's been been a busy little week. A um, couple of 3am finishes on stuff, but uh, no, so we picked up a new piece of kit uh, to coach kind of putting with when we're back from lockdown. A um, little bit of kit called Capto that's really, really nice and portable links to phones and iPads. So so we can pretty much bring putting lessons, either outdoors, putting green, playing lessons, or even to people in their own home. Um, but that comes with a, a number of bits of paperwork to do and certain little certifications with it and bits from the PGA that we've also done as well. So it's been, a, like you say, a bit of a busy week. But yeah, it's been really good. And I look forward to seeing what it can do for both myself and, and for a lot of clients when we're out of lockdown. Brilliant. And I think that leads into what we're going to talk about tonight because not many people have heard of Capto. And I think it leads into mm. to what we're going to talk about tonight is underrated golf brands. And what, what we kind of want to say about underrated golf brands is sometimes they're in the shadows of the so-called market leaders, the golf manufacturers out there, the big four, um, that, and sometimes they don't really get a look in or get considered. So we want to kind of bring them to the forefront tonight and maybe some new brands that are underrated because we're not, we don't know much about them at the moment. So that's what we're going to kind of touch on. Joe, do you want to kick us off with the kind of first one we're going to talk about? Yeah, certainly. So first one we, we're kind of going to look at is Wilson and specifically kind of their new driver for the year. Um, like you say, when, when we look at the big four, so to speak, we've even seen it on kind of the Golf Channel now. We've gone more American with the advertising tide lister everywhere. And it's very, very easy for these best of the rest companies to kind of fall away a little bit. Um, and this Wilson driver looks something seriously worth trying, um, mm. especially for the tech that's in it, the bits that come with it for the price it is. I think for a lot of the people that have got into golf this season, it's going to be something really worth looking at. Yeah, and just little things when there's there's three layers of composite crown. It's, it's, it's a multi-material driver. It's not just a, a titanium driver. It's got lots of tech in and it's got lots of things that, again, are going to help your swing speed, your distance, get that ball in play. And I just think, and again, like you touched on there, the price point's ridiculous. Yeah, I think, interestingly, we, we see a lot of this. So, obviously, Callaway kind of coined the term triaxial carbon. That's basically what they've done in this. They also then went to this supercomputer and also, it was said, and maximised ball speed off the face. Mm-hmm. And, and Wilson have done this themselves as well. So portions of the face have been optimised to give better ball speed that I think is important, obviously, when you're looking at the kind of people that are targeting this driver. You're going to want maximum ball speed off the toe, the heel, high and low as well, to give you the best chance of consistent drives. You tie that in with a, a 10 size CK blue shaft in it. Yeah. It's going to be a... It's going to be hard to kind of fight that value for money. It's going to be seriously good. Yeah, and, and for me, I'm just thinking players who, are, again, had a couple of seasons in the game, maybe looking to make that purchase for a new driver, don't really want to spend four fifty five hundred on a driver. I think this is it's a really good option because I think we've got to consider with Wilson as well. They're absolutely huge in the sporting market. Yes, they might not be in the terms of the golfing market of massive, like the, the bigger names, mm. but in the sporting world, they're absolutely huge. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been around for a long time, and I think this is something that a lot of people forget. They only kind of compare modern Wilson, shall we say, kind mm. of the package set Wilson. And when you look at the history of that brand, they, they've been superb. They really have. To I believe they still hold most majors, don't they? Yeah, they do. As a, as a brand. I mean, that's that's a serious shout. Mm. And, and to see that, I think it's a brand that, like you say, they've got the heritage, and maybe they've just positioned a driver here that is really really well priced mm. but in terms of the brand as well not not only just that driver i think wilson go under the radar as a as a brand full stop some of the irons that they've produced over the past few years 
that most people won't even have seen. Mm. But they are genuinely fantastic irons. Yeah, it's like butter, aren't they? They remind me very much, and I'd, I'd probably put these into the mix as well, of, of like Lynx golf. Lynx are very similar in terms of Wilson, where they make those beautiful players' irons that you stand there and you look and you stand over the ball and you go, hello, this is this is a good golf club, so I'm to- totally with you. But then also the, the kind of more forgiving irons as well, they make some, some great products. Yeah, and I think even like you say, I, I aren't totally sure on the pricing of the irons, but I don't think that as much as some of the other blades you'll yeah. pay for, and those V6s that they've produced have been, well, they've been a kind of a stalwart of that brand for three or four mm-hmm. years now, and something that they're really refining. And I think a lot of players, it wouldn't surprise me to see tour players going to them very soon. I think they make a, a really good product. Yeah, I'm with you there, Joe. I think that's a great one. And for the money, it's it's in, in UK pounds sterling, it's two hundred and eighty nine pounds. So it's it's reasonable for for a quality product like that under under the three hundred pound mark. Superb. My only gripe, if I've got any, it's a fixed head. That's the only gripe I've got. Yeah, I think it, it, it's it's easy to get around. Now that is, it's not something that needs to be made difficult especially mm-hmm. when wilson make adjustable drivers anyway yeah. um obviously from from a pro pro point if you get a breakage in the shaft it's, it's quick and easy to replace you can customize it a little bit if you don't love that tensile blue i don't think there'll be many people that don't love it mm-hmm. but it just makes it that little bit more personalizable and i suppose from a kind of a, a production point if you're making a ladies club that they probably will as well or a high loft or mid loft you've got the ability to just tip a shaft and bang it straight in there. There's no faffing with all the glue and you don't have to make all separate heads. I think they just have missed a, a little trick on that one. Yeah, I think we, we cross over now into the kind of next company and, and looking at Ben Ross, I think that they're, they're another company. They've been they've kind of an up and coming brand. They're not as well established as Wilson, but they've made some really good product over the years, not just clubs, but they've made clothing. I've had, I think of some Ben Ross, waterproof trousers that lasted me about 10 years they're amazing yeah i i like ben ross as a brand i think there's something that like you say is still getting a little bit overlooked or be maybe in the infancy still of that brand just waiting for mm-hmm. somebody to take it forward a little bit but they made a couple of drivers just recently the r type in particular or the type r that was geared towards a should we say a better ball striker for the driver and they they made those two clubs and they were fantastic. They were they were seriously good and value for money wise, like you say. If you can't grumble. Yeah. And it's the same with this new drive. We've got an Aero X drive, it's called. It's got a titanium construction, CT face. Just and what I love about this is right, it's got a one year warranty. So if it breaks or anything goes awry, you can get it sorted out, which is which is a great guarantee to have in a golf club. I, th- I think that's needed. I think some some companies maybe do need to learn a little bit from that because I've I've seen in places people where they don't quite know what warranty is on the club. So I still think Ping offer a two year warranty. Mm-hmm. Ping are very good at looking after you after that warranty period. But there's some people that have broke a shaft and they kind of go, oh well, do I don't I? If you're looking at swapping that, get a new shaft, get it sold, and have a look for something new rather than just mm-hmm. buying new. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the uh, a good thing to come out with and say because it gives people a little bit of reassurance on a cheaper driver as well. Yeah, and they're not cheap components when they've got a Fujikura Vista Pro in this one, and then they've got a Lampkin Crossline grip on it for two hundred and eighteen quid. <laughs> they're they're premium products for a a low a low priced club, and I love this because I mean back in the day, TaylorMade used to bring out a a shaft it used to be called something it was made for tailor made Mm -hmm. basically it was a cheap shaft with a fancy sticker on as well now these are bringing seriously premium products into the component lineup Mm -hmm. and i think that then adds that little bit more security to a brand because i I know from a lot of people that we've fitted they look now shafts are in the know you can't get away with a poor shaft in there or a ropey grip you've seen plenty of thin grips on cheap drivers and a Lampkin cross line is probably rivaling your kind of um, tall velvet mm. area. So to bring that out for that kind of price is, is impressive. Yeah, really good. Worth it, Luke. And I think with everything that we're talking about tonight, we're not promoting. We've picked these 
just off the cuff of us doing some research out there. Nobody's paying us to talk about their driver. Nobody's kind of pushing it in front of us saying, can you talk about it? These are things that we're seeing out there in the golfing world. And that's why we want to kind of bring them to you. This one, we're going over to the Far East, Joe. One of your kind of finds and a bit of a passion of yours. I know that the golf shaft is. Yeah. Go on, talk um, to us. Yeah, this is a series nerdy piece and I think something that is going to be very very interesting to see how it develops um, I am going to put this out there this could be a flash in the pan kind of thing mm. um, it might be a fad it might not but I've got an odd feeling that this could be something that we start to see um, the autoflex shaft lineup now famously they've they've kind of come out Rick Shields has done a review on them TXG have looked at them and they are a softer shaft. Now, that on kind of first hearing, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would you want a softer shaft? The idea behind what they've brought out is that you can get maximal ball speed from kind of minimal exertion on your swing, so you don't have to rip at it. I think that's a, a seriously good idea because they seem to have backed it up with plenty of stability in the shaft. And... I've looked at it. I've seen people hit 370 yard drives on reviews with them. That if it can do that for me, then I'll be putting one in. Um, but you look at it and go, okay, yeah, brilliant, long drivey stuff, fantastic. Then Adam Scott puts it in the bag for the tour event last week, and I think that's give it a whole new validity that we've got to look at this as something that maybe people are missing. Yeah, maybe the pain. But also, I don't think you'd put it in the bag or put it into the golf club if it wasn't a decent shaft either. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a common misconception with a lot of people that kind of a brand pays a player and they immediately go, oh, yes, definitely. I will put the newest model in the bag. I think it was yourself that mentioned to me the other day, Danny Willett's still playing with a rogue driver. Yeah. These guys aren't pay, playing the most modern kit. They're playing the bits that work. Mm. So Adam Scott wouldn't put that in if it was like a pool noodle attached to a grip that was just going to make him whack it all over the place. It's not in his best interests. So I think it is something that we've got to keep an eye out on. What fishing rod people have kind of talked to me about with this this shaft. Is that how you, because I know you're a fisherman, Jerry, like a fish as well. That, is that yeah. something, that, it's something that kind of you, you get and you understand? I think going to what Ping have done with the Distanza shaft, so for anyone that kind of doesn't know that 40 gram light shaft, I can understand that that's going to help somebody create swing speed. My concern with that is that people then lose control of the centre of the face. Mm -hmm. So that's where stiffness has always come into the brand. Mm -hmm. But is that more torque and stability of kind of a rotational issue? We're finding more support with MOI and driver heads, so a resistance to twisting on your off-centre hits. If they've now made a stable, soft shaft that basically means you'll be able to go at it a little bit easier and maximise, it's going to be... I don't know where it's going to go, but I really hope this one takes off. Um, this, they're is just 40, going to have to... this is 44 grams, isn't it, as well? It's not... Yeah, it, it's, I think they make a 40, a 50, and a 60 as the top-end tour shaft that it's light, it's very light. Um, so to see what they do with a 40 gram shaft, mm. it could be fantastic. To, I really look forward to seeing what it'll do. Um, my only kind of gripe with this is at 780 pounds. It's Ouch. a bit of an upcharge. It's a fraction of an upcharge. Um, but I think that's going to be one of them, where as they get out a little bit of a PXG, we're probably seeing this company in its infancy create a very good product and have to charge to make it mm. it wouldn't surprise me to start seeing that drop down maybe a year maybe three or four years if it holds on to how good it is then i think mm. we could start to see it come into a lot of bags yeah because they've, they've, they've played companies have been out there they've played they have and they've kind of moved away very quickly haven't they so like you said i'm keen to see if this stays in adam's bag if these guys stay about and they and they keep refining the product yeah, like you say, I don't even necessarily know if this is a how many people take it up. I think the big one is for Adam Scott. How long does that stay in the bag? Mm -hmm. Because he must have put it in there on faith that it's going to be better or as good as something he's already got. Yeah. 
I'll be interested to kind of have a look at some driving stats of his, seeing his distance, his accuracy. I think that's the one that gets me, the accuracy. It's got to be good. So to see what his numbers are like over the next couple of weeks, if he keeps it in the bag, Mm -hmm. then I hope to be sitting here in a year's time going, oh, all hail the auto flex and it's the best thing we've ever done. Yeah. It, it is. It, it is a lot, it. though, Joe. It's a lot, especially if a head's going to cost you four hundred or three hundred. Absolutely, we've just spoke about a driver that we love for under what two hundred and fifty pounds. Mm. You're going to spend three times on that shaft. This is where people have got to be a little bit sensible now and see how much difference things make. We talked about it in the first episode. You're almost paying per yard with this. Mm. If somebody comes up to you and says, "Do you want to try it for free?" Snap the hand off. But for eight hundred pounds, I think it's it's got to be a miracle worker, as Rick yeah. Shields said. You'd want it to hit the shop for you. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money, a lot of money. Let's move on to something that they, they kind of yeah. promoting now is is kind of a golf ball in particular. It's supposed to give that little bit more spin, give that more uh, aerodynamic shot. Is the the new Bridgestone E12? It's contact technology. This is this is that their big move into and making a bit of a difference in golf ball shape and dimension and things like that. What are your thoughts? Um, it's interesting. Obviously, we, we've we trialled a couple of different golf balls over the past few weeks. Um, I'm still going through a bit of testing with kind of four balls at the moment, trying to find out what we like. Um, very interesting technology with kind of the dimple change in this, so that little raised bit in the middle of the dimple. Mm. Um, I, I can see it working. Um, I, I just want to see a little bit of proof. Um, yeah. I want to see some spin numbers and and see what it does. Um, obviously, the worry for me, again, it's a Serling covered golf ball. Mm-hmm. So this technology with the urethane could be very different to what we see with the Serling. And I think, once again, when you look at technology that comes out like this, we've got to see how long it lasts. Do you remember like the kind of Callaway hex, was it? The, they had like a raised, a raised pattern on the golf ball and it was a hexagon shape, wasn't it? And has that lasted? Yeah. Has that last or is it still about? Yeah, it, it, so the hexagonal dimple pattern still lasted. Um, they refined it, as they said. That basically means they found something a little bit better and mm-hmm. <laughs> tweaked it, shall we say. Um, but the chrome softs, certainly from last year, still did have more of a hexagonal dimple mm-hmm. pattern on them. I know Bridgestone have always been one for trying things. Yeah. And I, I've got a lot of respect for that as a brand because everybody else seems very stuck in the ways. And I think from Bridgestone's perspective, if they make something that changes the golf ball, that's let's say Titleist take and put into the next batch, then it's improved golf balls as a whole. Mm. So a lot of the technology I think does come from Bridgestone. They're, as a whole brand, they're very, very underrated. The superb golf ball. Are they, again, you think about Tiger, how long he's potentially, or how many majors he's won with a Bridgestone golf ball with a Nike tick on, or a, a Titleist yeah. ball with a, on a Bridgestone cover. And, and and I think Bryson's brought into the forefront. Now Jason Day's put it into the golf bag. He's kind of unbranded, so he can play what he wants. So he's got the Bridgestone ball in his bag now. And I think we'll see a lot more people kind of gravitating towards it this year, I think. Yeah, I think just picking up on something you've said there, very interestingly, Jason Day will be a player to watch this year, especially mm-hmm. as what's in the bags as the year progresses, because this is now a free man. He can put in whatever he wants. So he will only be putting in things that really work for him. Mm-hmm. And I, I love this. It goes back to what I said in the first episode. If you get a driver that works, you don't have to buy the three wood. So he he's now at liberty to test whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't surprise me to see him with two different wedge brands in the bag, maybe a couple wood brands, but we're going to see a bag of potentially a best in show, mm-hmm. or certainly for him. Yeah. So, so I, I look again, forward to seeing that. It's the same this weekend. We've had two winners who've both on on branded bags. Paul Casey's got a mixed bag. Patrick Reed's got a mixed bag. I, I think this will be a real big thing moving forward of, of, of maybe these underrated companies coming into the forefront because people can play them play these brands with choice now. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Reed Diamonds are uh, a company that most people have never heard of. Mm-hmm. And coming to think of it, I can't even think of the name of them. Is it Grindworks? Is it Grindworks? It, that's the one. That is the one. But 
nobody knows that as a brand. And I, I bet nine tenths of the UK have never heard of that. Same with the wedges. So, I know him and Jason Day have got these artisan, artisan golf wedges in their bag. Yeah, it, I mean, well, we see it a lot with, with the customization on tour that they're grinding mm. wedges to what they want. If they've got an individual wedge manufacturer that's making them to spec, it's even better. Mm. It, it could be really interesting. And this is why we kind of do these discussions because we've, we've now found potentially six or eight brands in pros bags now that we don't know about. Yeah, and I think that's great for the industry, Joe. I know the big boys in the market are there and fair play they make an amazing product but it's great for like you said these underdogs underrated brands to, to begin a piece of the pie as well yeah massively and i think what we're starting to see is maybe these underrated brands have got more grip on the market than we think mm-hmm. and i think that's quite a nice place to be in golf because it assures us of a little bit more safety in the future mm-hmm. things are still being thought of companies are still making good products and if it's rivaling what is already thought to be a very good product, it makes your tailor-made stylists and Callaways work that little bit harder to mm. keep their market share. So we can be assured of constant development from there because these guys are going to overtake you eventually, if not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just to let everybody know as well, if, you, if you're watching it, we'll, we'll be flashing images up and stuff. So we'll show you all these brands and the dimple patterns and things as we're going along as well. So if you joined a little bit late on this, you'll there'll be on the edit, you'll see all those little bits as well. Um, next brand, Joe, Vice Golf. This I know this is something that both of us found in its infancy. And I was really impressed with the brand and with the, the kind of process that these guys have gone through to, to do what they've done in the industry. Yeah, certainly. These are almost in that crossover of up and coming and slightly underrated. Mm-hmm. I think that we're going to see some big things from Vice, if not this year in the next. Let's give them five years to see what they make. Obviously, the Adidas shoe deal they just signed, the golf ball. I think people are starting to now realise how good that is. Mm-hmm. I know a fair few people that have started to play. And you can always tell how popular a golf ball is by how many you find on the golf course. Yeah. And vice, you're starting to see more. And I think that's quite a, a positive place for them to be. The marketing strategy is fantastic. Mm. The, and the thing is as well, obviously, when you're going to a big box store, you're paying a premium, they're buying, they're going to sell at a higher mm-hmm. price because it's profit margins. Yeah. As where well, these guys that are going direct to consumer have got an ability to price their product that works for them. There's no middleman in it. Mm-hmm. So they don't, you know, American Golf doesn't have to make a 25% profit before Vice do. Mm-hmm. They will make their profit. That means you're getting a golf ball a lot cheaper. Yeah. I, I just, I like that model. When I spoke to the guys, probably, 10 years ago now when with that, the, the infancy of the company was coming about and you, they were just like yeah this is what we're going to do this is our strategy we're going to sell on the on the internet and we're going to stay we're going to stay true to that and they bought out head covers you can get um, headwear um, all sorts of kind of apparel stuff that they're bringing out now and i think it looks for kind of a modern golfer coming into the game for the first time it looks a cool brand to be associated with or have either on your head or in your hand with a golf ball it's, it's a cool brand yeah i mean as we discussed with kind of sam from fescue and dunes it, it's about starting with a good product mm-hmm. and then expanding that brand when people know what the brand's about and they made a series of very very good golf balls and that was it for quite a while and as they've gained traction now people want to be seen in the headwear with the shoes i mean that shoe deal could be the big break for them that they needed for a little while Mm -hmm. that now takes them in and obviously adidas a big clothing brand so if they're starting to pair up with them they're now going to have the financial backing and the advertising Mm -hmm. power that could take them into a seriously competitive brand more so than they already are yeah i just hope it doesn't kind of happen what did with adidas with this next brand that we're going to talk about adams because Adidas had Adams and TaylorMade and all these other brands under yeah. their umbrella. And Adams are back, Joe, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm so glad about this because the story with Adams was quite sad that kind of TaylorMade bought them out. I don't want to use the word bullied, but they almost did. They mm. they come along and went, oh, it's a really nice speed slot you make in the irons. 
in the woods as well. Mm. And for anybody that knows Irons, uh, Adams pre tailor made speed slot, they were the go to. Adams oh, yeah. made some extremely good golf clubs. And I mean, the idea hybrid, there was a period there when every good golfer had one of those in the back, maybe yeah. even two. And Taylor made kind of took that one. Oh, well, we'll do it as well. And when Adams challenged them about probably one of the most fundamentally brilliant ideas in modern golf, Taylor made just bought them and kind of quashed them, turned them into a very average brand just so they could take the speed slot. And it, it was a shame. But to see Adams back could be a very, very interesting development. Yeah, especially with the, the kind of tight lies concept still there, the, the synergy and the, the heritage, which is great. And as we're talking price tonight, 180 quid for a three wood. It's, it's a good price point again. I think what, what we're highlighting with this is once again, that somebody coming into golf last season, obviously being one of the only things you could do, a lot of people came into golf mm. and that was probably either borrowing dad's or uncle's sets, digging an old set out from the garage. And for the people that stick with it this year, there'll be a lot of people looking to upgrade, but you don't go from set in the garage to £2,000 set and your golf membership and everything else. People have got to be strategic with what they buy. Mm. And this three wood is probably one that will go in most bags and be a really, really good club for them that they're not going to have to replace next year. No. That's a five-year investment over mm -hmm. the time, and that once again provides great value for money. Yeah, because to be honest, Joe, I, I don't know about you, but it's probably the least club in my bag I change, my three wood. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Because it tends to be like a bit of, uh, or, the, or a five wood, you have a bit of an association, it's a fairway find, if it's a club that you can go back to and trust. So I, I, I'd imagine people would love this product as well and do the same. Yeah, I think that's probably, once again, like you say, it's the forgiving one off the tee, that little bit more loft helps people. Mm -hmm. So off the tee, they can usually keep it a little bit straighter. It's great for reaching par fives or long par fours. And a lot of people build up a really great memory with a five wood. I, I vividly remember a seven wood from my junior days that I absolutely loved. And it's still in the garage. I know it's that was the club that I most remember out of my entire set. And like you say, you build that relationship. So having a good quality three wood is probably a must. Yeah. Paying over the odds for it, I don't prioritise that quite as high. Mm. But yeah, I think this will be one that's, once again, like you say, velocity slot in it. Mm. It's fantastic. It's in my notes there of one mm. of the things that makes this club special. Yeah. So it's up there with the technology that made them brilliant. Mm. I'll deal a synergy shaft in it as well. So it's another decent shaft we're talking about tonight to get a good upgrade yeah. on that one. That that was in Callaway a few years back in the road. It stayed through and I think it's still available now, but that synergy shaft is a seriously good shaft. Mm. So once again, like you say, premium quality products at a lower price range. And I don't know why people discount these as, oh, it's cheaper, so it's no good. Yeah. The only difference between Adams and most of the big box brands is they aren't paying a world top 10 player to pay their, play their clubs. Mm -hmm. And that's where the saving is. You're not putting money in the top 10's pocket. You're actually getting a quality product for yourself at keeping your own money. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think this is why these episodes are important because for people out there, like you said, who are maybe picking up podcasts, looking at different golf options, thinking I want some insight and industry insight, but I don't want to pay the, over the odds. This is why we do these episodes and this is why I think we, we enjoy talking about them so much. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I know from my fitting days in, in a big box store, you the most important thing is the person coming to you, their money is hard earned and very easily spent. And with it mm. comes that kind of trust. And my objective always was to provide somebody with the best set of clubs for a price point that works for them. Mm. And a lot of this pricing is it's a serious incentive towards getting a good set of golf clubs. Yeah. People might be sticking with old clubs for the next two or three years thinking that it's got to be a, a monstrous investment. I know some of these big box stores offer finance on stuff, mm. but for some of this stuff, it's maybe save up for a couple of months, replace the three wood save for another month, maybe put the driver in. And you can do it at a pace that works you to ultimately improve your golf game without breaking the bank. 
Mm, I like it, Jim. Really like it. Great episode tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed it. What are we talking about next week? Uh, so we've got what we'll call courses of the world. So places we've been, places we want to go, places that we think are worth visiting for people mm. as well. Um, yeah. I really look forward to that. I think that's going to be an interesting interesting episode. Um, I certainly yeah. want to dig some hidden gems up. I know that gets thrown around a lot, but <laughs> I think some hidden gems that maybe we don't particularly know about and hopefully that we'll get to play and, and ultimately review for people. Yeah, and please in the comments below or wherever you're listening to this, please either drop us a message or in the comments, tell us your favorite golf course, tell us where you want to go and play or where me and Joe should go and play when we're, when we're out of lockdown. I've got to go away and make a, a massive list now of all the golf courses I've played and we'll, we'll have some fun next week. Yeah. I look forward to it. Joe, thanks for everything tonight. I really appreciate your input. It's been great. Thank you everybody out there for listening. And we'll see you yeah. next week. Pleasure as always. Look forward to seeing everybody next week.